welcome back to the Waco Trib Super Syntex Friday Night Lights podcast. I'm Chad Conine, Trib Sports Writer, along as always with Trib Sports Editor Bryce Cherry. How are you doing today, Bryce? Doing fine. Another busy uh, Wednesday, but uh, yeah. as we uh, ramble on towards October, indeed, it'll be upon us on Friday. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, also, it's week six. I mean, you know, you turn around and it's week six, right? Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, you know, we've got uh, pretty much by next week, district will be here for, for virtually everyone. There'll be some four team, like six man districts that won't start for for a few weeks. But uh, yeah, well, yeah, and even this week, uh, you know, I, we. Uh, don't have as much of an outline of topics this week, but let me throw one at you real quick uh, that we hadn't previously talked about, but it's the Battle of the Bell Week. How about that? It is the Battle of the Bell Week, and, you know, it might a few weeks ago have looked a, a little underwhelming, uh, right. just maybe based on Cameron's record, but I always did feel like Cameron was a better team than their record indicated. And mm -hmm. I would say the Caldwell Hornets might agree with that statement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, for the uninitiated out there, the Battle of the Bell is Cameron Yo versus Rockdale. Classic rivalry. They haven't always been in the same district, but they've been in the same district a lot. Uh, Rockdale, I believe, is four and one at this point, maybe three and two. It was part of my preview capsule research. Uh, they're three and two. Cameron won their first game last week. They, they beat Caldwell, but Seven, this is the key. Seventy to nothing. Seventy to nothing. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So that's what. That's a heck of a way to get your first win of the year, too, isn't it? You know. Yeah, and uh, and they, they had the built for tough player of the week, uh, Ryan was it Fabian Bynum. No, or somebody else. From no, that? it was Ryan Munich. Oh, the quarterback. The quarterback. quarterback. He was fourteen out of fifteen with the. Uh, you know. What was it? Six touchdowns, four touchdowns. I think it was six. Uh, so yeah, he you know, over four hundred yards passing. He had a had a great game. Absolutely, and um, I think that's going to be a pivotal game in the district standings. There, uh, you know, although I think they're probably both playoff teams from that eleven three AD one, um, but. And I think you're going to have a real triangle there because I, I think Academy's good, but I don't think Academy's good good enough to knock off Lorena Rockdale or Cameron. So I think that you're going to have that kind of tripod of teams that uh, has a chance to to vie for the district championship, and and any one of them can make a playoff run. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, I still like Lorena as kind of the class of that district, but. Um, you know, you mentioned Rockdale and Cameron. It'll be interesting to see how that one plays out this week. And I do feel like maybe this district isn't quite as competitive top to bottom as it was last year. Obviously, Troy lost a, a great, great player in Zach Herbacek, who was kind of a guy that would really keep you in any game. Um, it looks like McGregor maybe not quite at the level that they were at last year. We'll see. I mean, it's still – you know, we still got five more games to play. Uh, the Bulldogs are sitting there at two and three. Um, and they've got, you know, a big one this week against Academy. So, uh, you know, if McGregor could, could win that one, that would put them right in the mix. Yeah, that uh, Academy McGregor game is one of the more intriguing local games and kind of a light week of, uh, at least schedule wise, um, there might be some fantastic games out there. You, you, you can't really tell from one week to the next what, what Friday night is going to give us, but six A's are off. University and class five A's off. You know, they're by week. Um, a lot of four A's, even some three A's are off. Aren't all of our four A's off? Yeah. Uh, I, I believe that's right. And like I said, uh, there's some three A's. There's uh, I think maybe the, the Marlin two A district is off. That's correct. So now just uh, just to kind of pull the curtain back a little bit um, on what we do, we we still technically cover Temple Belton and Lake Belton, but, uh, you know, not as close. We don't staff their games as often. 
and of Correct. course they play this weekend. Yeah, obviously we 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 recognize that uh, you know more people are probably going to the Temple Telegram for for that that kind of stuff. Um, but there is a, a pretty interesting game in 12-6A this week with uh, Harker Heights traveling to Temple. Um, the, the Knights are undefeated and, and Temple, um, you know, is 1-0 in district and uh, looking to kind of get back on track. I, that'll, that'll be a, a really great, great, great matchup. Yeah, I was around some of our TV friends uh, just a little while ago at the first day of Baylor women's basketball practice and, and asked what their game of the week was. And sure enough, it was that Temple Harker Heights game. Yeah, not surprising. No, no. Uh, other games, in, in one game that I almost kind of want to go to, but it's it's a little bit far to travel to a small town for a game that might not be that competitive. But Crawford goes to Toler this week. Um, that could be a great game in that district. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I do feel like that's that's a pretty interesting game. Toler is four and one on the year. Um, you know, it's we'll see if they can compete with with the Pirates. I think um, just like Lorena, maybe the class of its district. I think Crawford probably is the class of that seven two A district. Um, you know, Bosqueville gave them a game last year in the regular season, but then it turned around and it was not quite as close uh, in the playoffs. Um, so, you know, I, I just feel like Crawford is one of those teams. We talked about it last week here on the podcast uh, where you were asking about, you know, who are so, some of those I'm trying to remember the phrasing, the signature programs out there. And I think Crawford is one of them. They kind of define the era. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, my niece, Reagan Durant, goes to – she's a Toller Rattler, third grader. So conflict of interest there anyway for me, right? <laughs> right. So uh, one of the other things we talked about on the podcast here, and this is, I think, a few podcasts ago, was we were envisioning we – were, we were complimenting uh, the strong season so far of Lorena and West and um, – and just imagining, you know, those two playing each other. We, we just looked it up. It would, would not be until the, uh, the uh, state semifinals. Uh, West is in region one and Lorena is in region two. Yep. So, you know, it would be a while before that matchup could happen, if it does even happen. But um, what are some other, you know, local matchups that you would not mind seeing out there uh well um let's correct that by the way uh i just realized this the regions go they don't go eight teams eight districts per region they go four districts per region so they would actually would not play until the state semifinals now that i take another look at it you mean you follow the, me on that do you mean the state final yeah the state final they wouldn't play until the state final because actually west is region two and lorena is region three Right. Okay. Uh, yeah. A little bit with, of correction it, on the fly there. Well, and it's uh, forgivable on our parts just because for so long. Yeah. Well, yeah. football is the one sport where it's different. I mean, everything mm -hmm. else is eight, team, eight districts per region. So, right, 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 right. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a great question. And we saw it last year in that we saw uh, Crawford and Bosqueville meet in the regional final. Um, you know, I don't know that I see that matchup happening again this year, but Bosqueville's gaining momentum. Uh, now, it's kind of funny. We write these things, and I particularly write my column, you know, Saturday for Sunday, and, and you want to be bold, you know, you want to write things that people, you know, see and pay attention to. But sometimes, you know, you can maybe... I don't want to say get yourself in trouble, but I'm out there on the field last Friday night talking to Kevin Hoffman and, uh, and I'm asking him, you know, they won the game at Italy. And so they had a bye week and then they play Chilton the week after that on October 8th. And uh, I mentioned that a couple of weeks ago I had written, you know, can the Chilton pirates board March ship, you know, and, uh, and, and coach Hoffman said, yeah, you know, Chris called me right after that came out and said, said, man, I did not tell him to write that. I didn't, 
I said, look, I said in my in the first quote from him that he was laughing about the even the idea that you guys were worried about him. He's like, I know, I know. And Coach Hoffman looked at me and goes, I read it. I read it now. <laughs> and so I'm sitting there going, I mean, it was completely complimentary to Mart and saying that they probably didn't have anything to worry about. But you know what? Uh, Coach Hoffman made a good point. They don't get a lot of bulletin board material thrown their way, so they got to use what they get. Absolutely. When you're the Mar Panthers, first of all, it's hard enough just to, you know, scrapping together a, a schedule because, mm -hmm. you know, so many teams don't even want to play them. Uh, mm -hmm. But, yeah, I, I agree. Not not a lot of people talk smack at in Mart's direction. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and you've already acknowledged here that Chilton was not doing that uh, wisely, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. but uh, can Chilton make it a game? I mean, I think it'll be one, one to watch, you know, I mean, uh, I, I think both you and I would, would pick Mart and, um, and, and that's the, probably the safe smart pick, but uh, you know, weird things happen. So, I mean, I, I guess that's your answer your, to the question is, Mark I mean, Chilton? they could see each other again in the regional final. I, I, really, I really think they could. Um, Chilton looks stronger every week. Uh, you know, they've got um, a couple of kids, uh, Braylon Fisher and Jamarian Benjamin, that are, that are making an impact for them, along with a lot of returning guys from last year's team. So, yeah, I mean, um, watching Italy play the other night and knowing that they had beaten Italy – um, by a point and Mark beat them worse, but Italy had his, you know, pretty good looking team uh, for a class two a outfit. Yeah. So what's yours? Well, okay. Let me, I have like, maybe because it was my, my thought, my question, I have like four in mind. That's fine. Uh, okay. Uh, two that won't happen. One that could happen and one that will happen. So uh, okay. the two that won't happen, uh, I mean, how could we not want to see La Vega and China Spring play, you know? Oh, right. I mean, and they can't because they're not in the same division. Correct. La Vega's 4A Division one, uh, Division one, and China Springs 4A Division II. Uh, both of them look like, I mean, I don't, I don't know if you'd say vintage La Vega and China Spring teams, but certainly China Spring does. Uh, and, and La Vega, you know, looks like La Vega. I mean – you know, mm -hmm. they, they played Argyle right down to the wire. Uh, they go win, uh, you know, on the road in the, you know, in a hostile environment uh, last week in, at Corpus Christi Miller. Um, you know, La Vega is going to be La Vega and they're going to be, mm -hmm. you know, a team to watch. So th that would be fun, a fun one. We always like seeing those two teams play. They did play. It just happened to be in August when nobody really cared. Uh, it was a scrimmage. So, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But, um, you know, another one, we just were talking about this team, Mart. I would, I'd love to see him play Crawford. Uh, but again, 2A Division One, 2A Division II, uh, you know, and I, I mean, I think that's a matchup I would love to see more often in non-district play. Uh, I, I think Kevin Hoffman would welcome it. Uh, I'm not sure Greg Jacobs would, <laughs> uh, but, you know, again, that's sort of the story of, of Mart. I mean, not a lot of teams want to play Mart in football. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, uh, another the one that one, will happen. This is the one I'm curious about, the one you think will happen. Well, okay. This is the one that could happen. And then I'll, okay, get, okay. I'll get to the one that will happen and you'll understand. Okay. Okay. Uh, the one that could happen Going down to the six-man ranks, I'd like to see Abbott and Jonesboro play. And I think we may have talked about that potential matchup, um, you know, before. Uh, but, you know, again, both teams are 5-0. and oh, Both teams are clicking along. They're looking like teams that, you know, should stick around a while in the six-man playoffs. And I think it'd be fun to see them play in the playoffs. So that's one that I, I hope does happen, you know uh that would that'd be fun to play where would they play that you think uh maybe whitney Oglesby? they could play at live oak stadium come you know yeah all the moms could go to the magnolia silos and then come over to the game <laughs> ah well played i like it <laughs> that'd be great i'd love to see that one downtown waco mm -hmm. i was thinking whitney maybe is where they'd play that i don't know 
but um it'd be a big advantage for Abbott yeah it's not that far but I mean that's I'm thinking sort of you know meet in the middle uh and then the one that will happen um and it happened twice last year but it'll happen in district play in a few weeks uh is live oak and vanguard um you know and i feel like so live oak handled them pretty well two times last year and maybe it'll be the same case but vanguard is really really playing well and they've got a kid walker Nall who already has what 1200 passing yards uh 29 touchdowns and no interceptions i mean that's kind of bananas numbers like video game stuff i realize it's six man football but he's got uh more than double anybody in our area in terms of passing numbers so they really fling it around and I mean, you know, I, I'll be interested to see how that one plays out. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I just want you to point out that Bryce is going six man heavy on us there. You know, I had brought two, up two six, six man matches. I had one four A game, one two A game, two six man games. So right, half of your games were six man. It reminds me of our pick box, pick box. <laughs> I like the little guys. You know, we got to give I them. Know, I know, you, you're you're the six man champion. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll take it. You should you should have taken over for Granger Huntress. I've written uh, two stories with the headline "The Joy of Six. So, <laughs> the Joy of Six and the Joy of Six Two. <laughs> My, you better quit while we're ahead on that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, well. Anything else this week? I'm covering Dallas Madison at West, which I don't think will be that close of a game. Not to give Dallas Madison any bullet, bulletin board material, but I don't think it's going to matter. Yeah, you know, uh, it is, like you said, it's a light week with a lot of teams on, on open weeks. Um, you know, I, uh, one thing I was looking, you know, both you and I put together the, uh, the stats each week, and there's a kid out at Wortham, Tanner Bean who uh, has got 995 yards rushing already. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. here five games into the season. So mm -hmm. what's, what's that? 200 yards a game, right? Close uh, to it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right at it. Uh, be interested to see if he, A, can get to 2,000 yards and uh, B, if Wortham, you know, can get in the playoffs. Wortham's a school that, you know, recent years hasn't had a ton of, you know, football success to really hang its hat on. Um, I think they're capable of getting out of that district. That is the uh, the Mark district. Um, yeah, I was going to say we're back on that district with them and, and Chilton. Uh, yeah, you're talking about you know, Mark. Remond's kind of in a rebuilding year. Right. Uh, Hubbard, I'm not sure if Hubbard had an injury, but they lost a game that I didn't expect them to lose. Yeah, lost, um, lost to Dawson. Right, right. Uh, but, you know, who, who knows what came into play there. Um, and then Frost is two and two. Uh, but I don't I, I think Wortham can beat Frost. Uh, they might be able to beat Hubbard. And, and you're talking about four teams making the playoffs. So they could, I think, get into that playoff mix. You know, more power to, pro, to Frost. I hope they can get the wheels turning and and. and I think in, in their situation, it's just a matter of how many boys are in the school district and all of that. But but so I don't, I don't want to uh, be too rough on them. But I will say this. Frost did a heck of a job scheduling to get themselves in position to win a couple of games early. Yeah, obviously, they've got an uphill road because like you acknowledged, they're in a numbers crunch. And uh, I think they're in such a numbers crunch that they're technically playing 11 man football with with six man enrollment numbers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, you know, it's something, not every school wants to go to six man, even when they are in that, you know, enrollment uh, piece there, you know, I mean. Right, right. So anyway. Well, then it was an interesting conversation with, with uh, Bryce Helton last week about Live Oak, about, you know, their uh, potential move to 11 man, which is not guaranteed at all because, you know, they've got 25 players in their middle school program and 20 players in their high school program. So if those 
middle school numbers stay solid and those classes keep coming up, that's probably going to lead them to go to 11 man. But you can't go to 11 man with 20 boys, you know, in the football program. Right. Uh, obviously, like you said, it, it comes down to not just the number of boys, but the number of boys that are participating. And mm-hmm. I guess we should say the number of players. There's always room for, for girls to come out. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, in fact, speaking of six, we, we're really six man heavy this week. I guess that's just the way it is. But I had made the drive out to Cranfield's Gap yesterday. First time I've been out that direction since my dad and I used to hunt out there when I was in middle school. But uh, the kid that I'm doing the story on for Friday, Trenton Robertson, uh, testicular cancer survivor, and his sister plays on the team. She's a sophomore on the team now. Uh, she had tweaked a knee, and and, her, and mom told me that that she might probably be done with football now. It's getting a little bit too rough and tumble. But um, she was out there running. They were in the gym because there was a storm out there, and she was out there running, you know, the length of the, the court and back with everybody else, uh, toughing it out. So, yeah, and you see uh, some some female players from time to time. I know Bosqueville had one that I uh, saw at practice last year. So that that's uh, – yeah, Something you know, even at uh, a school like Midway, um, uh, Cooper was on a, a sub varsity team with a with a girl that had a girl on it a couple years ago. So, um, you know, you see, yeah, you see it from time to time. They'll pop up. So, uh, I think another future podcast should be let Let's not completely go down this road today, but um, can Texas uh, accommodate or could it could it have girls football it's been talked about girls, yeah I mean what the future may hold you know yeah that may be something down the road absolutely well uh, speaking of women's sports I got to go write a women's basketball story now before dinner time before the dinner bell rings all right well we'll see you out at the games uh everybody enjoy your break if you're on one this week if not find and, uh, a good game and eat a frito pie and enjoy we'll the come game. back all district all the time starting next week yeah baby all, all right. right see you later